You know what this means, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big game talk YouTube midweek special. So I want you to leave a like and subscribe and because uh, we got a great video out there for you. Now, UFC 249 is canceled, but we're keeping the UFC talk rolling. Uh, somebody put out a, you have $15 to build five fights for UFC fantasy card. Which fights make the cut? It's right there on the screen now. And, and, and it's got like $5 fights, $4, $3, $2, $1. Actually, it's a pound because uh, I guess the Brits made this. But anyway, so me and Brad have gone ahead and used $15 to, to pick out our perfect um, card, our, our dream card. And that's why I'm in my island guard because we're getting ready for a private island fight night. So, uh, Brad. And now, and now remember when we're doing this too, you have to have the full five fights. It has to be essentially like a main card. So you, mm -hmm. we have to pick five fights here. Yeah. All right. So, so you want to just get into the main event there, Chris? Let's get into the main event. What's your main event, Brad? So my main event, the $5 fight is Connor versus Nate at welterweight. And mine is going to be Khabib versus Tony for that big lightweight belt. Let's go. See, the thing is why I didn't take the Khabib Tony is because this would be booked for, what, the sixth time? And I just really don't want the world banned. <laughs> because if that gets booked again, they're going to have to up the game in order to cancel it. And I, I, I think Connor versus Nate is – I think that's a – it's a less deserving fight probably, but it's a more entertaining fight. See, I don't know. I think, I think Tony Khabib turns out real entertaining. I, th I think just – with Tony's just like his just wild card nature of fighting mixed mm -hmm. with Khabib's just desire to wrestle. Like it's just going to be Khabib chasing him around the octagon and him doing like backward somersaults everywhere. Um, trying Khabib trying to grapple him down and, and Tony just finding creative ways to, to weasel out of every, every one of uh, Khabib's holds. I think this is like, my thoughts is given this is a, a made up scenario Mm -hmm. um we can assume that this is set in stone like i don't think i don't think you can like think about consider acts of god when when trying to put together this hypothetical card and i That's think fair. this is the this is the closest we're going to get to actually seeing these two in the ring because as you said this thing is cursed i mean I, i'm 100%. starting to think the entire global pandemic happened just because this fight was brewing in the works the, the, and the fight, it scares me because it's been canceled so many times that I feel like by the time we actually get it, it's just going to let us down. We're gonna see, we waited all these years for this. So yeah. I, I, I took, I kind of took the safe fight here in the Connor Nate because the trilogy, I mean, that trilogy has got to happen at some point anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, with Connor McGregor's kind of turn it, return into the octagon up against uh, Cowboy, like it's just, I, I'd love to see him fight again. Mm hmm. And this is that you're right. That that's one that is just we've been waiting to see uh, round three for a long time. And with those two guys, uh, given their levels of trash talk, yeah. um, half of the fun is is just catching up on the trash talk prior to the fight yeah. and really kind of getting that tension built. And those guys are going to do it. Um, I think all these all these fights in the in the t in the five dollar range, like they're all ones that have kind of like. There's some tension there. There's some rivalry there. Um, they're all good fights. I think uh, whichever, whichever one you go with, it's a win. It'd be a yeah. win for the fans in this hypothetical for sure. situation. For sure. Now, the co-main. Who do you have in the co-main event there, your $4 fight? I have Nunez versus Shevanko. I like that. Wait, that would be the, the trilogy for them too, right? They've already yeah. fought twice. Yeah. So that's like something. I mean, really, this fight is for the crown of like who's who's the or who's the queen of UFC um that's this fight um yep. this is like i think both of them have kind of hit points where um their competition is kind of like they're running out of competition except for each other so yep. i think um see, crowning a championship champion uh in a fight between those two yep. uh, would be really good for the sport in terms of kind of really seeing where people are at um i agree and I uh, yeah, I think it'd be a, I think it'd be a really good fight. I think Shevchenko mm -hmm. always is at a disadvantage in that fight for mm -hmm. the fact that she's a natural twenty five or Nunez can fight all the way up at forty five. But yeah. I mean that's that's an exciting fight. Yeah, see, because I th I think Shevchenko has I think a little bit more speed on her on, mm -hmm. on Nunez. Um, but yeah, the extra weight goes to Nunez, and I think that's gonna I like if I had to call a winner, I think it's Nunez. Mm -hmm. And I mean the the weight like. 
seeing this fight happen in real life, the biggest challenge is going to be the, the weight difference. As you said, Shevchenko yep. goes like is usually at 125. Nunes goes all the way up to 140. So it's going to be it's going to be kind of tough to ever see this fight. But man, that's why I have it on the on the dream wish list. And for me, my co-main event, which is a fight that I think could easily be a five dollar fight in the main event, is John Jones versus Daniel Cormier at heavyweight. The, again, a trilogy fight, and it's one that I, at this point in both of their careers, I don't think we ever see this, and it, it's it makes me super sad because this fight it would be absolutely amazing, especially at heavyweight too. Because mm-hmm. I think heavyweight gives Cormier a much better chance at winning. I think it'd be a very even fight, but like with the coronavirus with and Jones's legal troubles and Cormier getting up there in age, I don't think we ever see it. But in fantasy land, that I, I take that every day. Yeah, because, I mean, like, it's one of those things, like, they're just teasing us. Every time they lip at each other, they just tease us because everybody knows, really, mm-hmm. that this fight is probably never going to happen. Cormier is, is on his way out, and John Jones is just not – I mean, he doesn't seem interested in going up to heavyweight, and Cormier is not coming down. He's not coming down the light heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, But it's it's the fight. I think, really, it's, it's the fight for – who, like I said, the Nunez Shevanko is for the who is the queen of the UFC. I think this one is almost there's a case we made. This is for king of the UFC. I mean, the heavyweight yeah. division is so huge, and and whoever can and Cormier has been at the top of the heavyweight. Jones has been on the top of the lightweight. Um, it, it's a match made in heaven, really, um, to yeah. get those two together in the ring, especially with the history between them. Um, it's such a big history, but of course, I mean, John Jones gets in his own way. Um, who knows when we're going to see him in the USC next because of his legal troubles. And, uh, even, and beyond that, when are we going to see him in the heavyweight division? I don't know. And how much longer does Cormier have to be still like, to still be a UFC fighter? He's getting up there. Yeah. And, and he's pretty really, much said that if the coronavirus goes on too much longer, he's just going to have to retire. Yeah. And, and so that's really um, a real, a real shame. Yeah. But a hundred percent. I agree. And now for your $3 fight, who you got here? I want the rematch of what was one of the greatest fights in UFC history, Zhang versus Joanne. I think this is a no-brainer. 100%. I got that on here, too. I, I, I think we have to see that fight again. And I like on prior podcasts, I've said that I don't not necessarily believe that Joanne deserved the immediate rematch because of her prior title losses. But you kind of swung me on it. I, like, I think we have to see this. Just how great that fight was. On my scorecard, too, I even, I even had Joanna winning. Yeah. So I'd love to see them go at it again. And it showed, like, Zhang's really becoming a superstar in the sport. Joanna's already that proven superstar. You mm-hmm. put them in again after that like, fight of the year, it's going to sell tickets. Yeah, and, and as you said, like, uh, you weren't sure about, like, because Joanna's lost a lot of title matches kind of leading up to that fight and then losing that one. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like you've said on the show before, this is one of you, like, what have you done for me lately? That's all what, what Dana White, what the UFC is all about when it comes to picking who gets what fight. And I think you think about what have you done for me lately? Well, Joanna, you took an absolute, one of the like worst beatings I've ever seen in, in mm-hmm. the octagon uh, it, to go toe to toe five rounds with one of the, the best fighters in the, in the sport. Um, and you almost scratched out a win. And I mean, I agree with you. I think on my scorecard, Joanna had won that. So I think, like, I think that just erases all the past title failures. And, and that's not really yeah. the, that's not even in the conversation. If this fight were to be built building up, I yeah. think just after like the recency bias of just seeing Joanna with her face like going huge, but not tapping like not not backing down. Yeah, um, that I think that earns her a spot to to t- go for the title again. And uh, Zhang still has something to prove against Joanna. That's the, like, yeah. she, she, she beat her, yes, but it was real close. It was really close. So um, Zhang, this is her chance to really prove. Yeah. Um, like if she put, if she put Joanna away, mm-hmm. just star power. Star power. Absolute yeah. star power. Um, so th- that's definitely uh, a fight to make. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, before before we go on to the two dollar fight, because I feel like everybody watching this on YouTube is going to be asking this question, and I it, I noticed it, and I haven't asked, but why is there a lobster on your desk? A lobster? Is that not look like a? It is lobster. Okay. <laughs> why is there a lobster on your desk? 
What, do you think it's a real lobster? No, I don't think it's a real <laughs> lobster. But I was sitting here for the first couple minutes of this video going, is that, is that what I think it is? Or do I need glasses? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, okay, I just had, I was putting this together. I have my David Wright bobblehead, my Carlos Beltran. He's slapping a trash can, uh, a smaller uh, uh, David Wright. And then I just had a lobster. Boom. Good to go. We're ready to go. It. There's no reason, but it's the island fight. I'm in my island garb. We Let's got the go. lobsters there. I'm just ready. Dana White, send me to your private island. Let's get these fights going. Um, that's that's, awesome. the, <laughs> that's the big game talk difference. That's the big game talk difference. You know, we 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 we're topical. You know, mm -hmm. we we we're topical about the tropical island fights. That's what let's I'm talking go. about. Okay, let's let's get back into that. <laughs> All right, yeah. So who's your two dollar fight? Two dollar fight is Holloway versus Gaethje, and this is this is my th thought process, right? Because that fight would be at lightweight, most likely. Um, and yeah, that's what that's what it lists on the on. The, yeah, it's the what card. it lists on the on the thing. Um, Gaethje, I mean, he's a guy that was what up until like up last week before UFC 249 was canceled was supposed to get a chance for an interim belt. You know, so he's a lightweight who is kind of like lightweight. The top of the lightweight division is very crowded. Um, yeah. He's kind of at the bottom of the top, I would say, it, like, so to speak. Uh, That's a good and, way of putting it, yeah. And he is um, like, and maybe he deserves a little bit more than that, but it's just so crowded, it's hard to say, right? And I think Holloway coming into the the lightweight division that's an interesting story because you you take a crowded lightweight division and you throw in another superstar um yeah. holloway and then you give gaichi who's the bottom of the top say defend your place yeah because if this guy comes in he messes up all like your hopes for a title fight so yeah. so this is gaichi's like chance to really prove himself that he can kind of launch himself into that spot for for a real not just an interim title when this coronavirus is going down and everything's shuffled up but a normal situation where you would get a, t a proper title shot i think this yeah. is the chance for gaichi to, to prove it in a big way and yeah. hallway to come in and just say like hello lightweight division i'm here for you i'm i'm going for the top i think it's a great storyline if, yeah. if you sell it right if yeah. you really make sure fans understand that all yeah. that's going on i think i think that's a great story and, and a great story equals a great fight most time most of the time right so yeah um i think like, that's that, that's a fight to make yeah yeah i think you said it perfectly that that's my pick there too i think it's mm -hmm. and i mean aside from all the story and everything too it's gonna be an absolute barn burner because both of those guys show up to fight mm -hmm. i think it's absolute steal for two bucks yeah yeah it's like some of these it's just weird like whoever put this together um, I would totally kind of revamp this and change, move, move everything around. A lot of these, I mean, a lot of these are uh, every every single fight on here is is a main event. Yeah, that's no, I, well, yeah. yeah. There's a few like the Cannoneer versus Romero. That's a fight night main event, mm -hmm. and like the Miocic Blade. Well, I guess Miocic's a champ, so he's getting it. But like the Whitaker Till, because he's not like that's a fight night main event right now. Covington Wonder Boy. Yeah. That's yeah, well, that that leads us to number the one dollar one. Who's your one dollar one? Uh, Covington versus Wonder Boy. Absolutely, the heel versus the nicest motherfucker. Yeah, that's the that's the storyline. That is the <laughs> um, it's like literally the 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 quote like Wonder Boy versus yeah. the like evil villain. You know, it's a, yeah. you can you can really play up the kind of like superhero aspect of these UFC fighters. You know, like um, yeah. and Covington is going to like all wonder boy has to do is play off of covington covington has to play the heel and yeah. wonder boy just has to not be the heel and that's an interesting fight that people are going to be into um that yeah. press conference would be so fun um yeah. uh that would be uh that's that's a great fight to make and, and it's a steal for a dollar yeah my my one dollar pick is the henry cejudo versus pirian because i mean one dollar I'm I'm taking the title fight there. Suhudo's the champ. Yan's pretty deserving of a title shot. I think I think it'd be a very entertaining fight. And mm -hmm. so that that that's gotta be my pick there. Yeah, that's a fair pick. I love Henry Suhudo. Um I almost took that one myself for the one dollar. Mm -hmm. Uh and I mean you're right. It's a it's a title fight. Mm -hmm. On at the to start off you start off your your main card with a title fight. Yeah. And that like 
I mean, that's you, that's what it, that's a dream uh, yeah. right there. That's a uh, that's a dream card. And all of this happening on Dana White's private island. Um, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that be amazing? That man? would be amazing. So all for the low low price of fifteen pounds. Yeah, all for the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We pay fifteen, and then we make like sixty five bucks a pop. There you go. That's yeah. that's one. So, so yeah, I I think I think it'd be pretty interesting. It, like, and I just can't wait until we can stop talking about fake fight cards and talk about real fight cards too. Yeah, I'm getting like. I was really into this video and then halfway through I realized like, oh man, like we really need sports to come back. <laughs> because like this is a, a hot button topic right now. It's like, who would you pick for your fantasy main card? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So I think on that note, thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you check out our other YouTube videos and check out our podcast on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you find your podcasts. And check out the rest of our YouTube videos. We posted our episode 12 on the weekend. So make sure you check that out. And like and subscribe. Make sure you do that. Really let us know you were here. Thanks for watching that YouTube clip, which was taken from our full show, Big Game Talk with Brad and Chris. If you want to check out the show and let's give it a listen, you can find us wherever you find your podcasts. And if you want to watch some more YouTube clips where we talk about all your favorite sports, Click any of these boxes here or check the link in the description. Thanks and have a great day.